For my laboratory research project, I decided to test the effects of pH change on the process of yeast fermentation. Yeast is a single-celled organism that thrives in an environment of warmth, moisture, and a food source being present, usually in the form of sugar. And once yeast starts to fuel itself and feed off of the sugar in its environment, it begins to produce carbon dioxide, which is the process known as fermentation itself. And while all of the factors of warmth, moisture, and sugar being present are important for yeast to thrive, it also does need to have a balanced pH. pH is a scale that is used to assess the alkalinity or the acidity of a substance. And if that is thrown off, you know, in many organisms, not just yeast, uh, there can be adverse effects. After completing this research, it led me to hypothesize that if the pH of a yeast solution is increased, then the process of fermentation would be inhibited or slowed down. Quickly before I dive into the experimental design and the data and what I conclude from the experiment that I ran, I just wanted to share why I chose this. And the main reason was is because I've never baked or used yeast in my own cooking. So I figured that it would be really fun to do an experiment and watch it grow and just kind of have a hands-on experience with yeast since I'm so unfamiliar with it. The experimental premise of my experiment was to use an empty water bottle to breed the yeast environment with varying amounts of vinegar to adjust the acidity of the vinegar itself. And in order to judge whether or not the acidic environment inhibited the process of fermentation, a balloon was secured on top of each of the sample's water bottle opening so that if carb enough carbon dioxide was produced from the yeast solution, it would then inflate the balloon. And that was the way that I judged whether or not the yeast was able to complete its fermentation process. Here I wanted to include a simple table of each of my samples and whether or not they included sugar or vinegar. So from bottle one to bottle four, you can see that the level of vinegar descends and the remainder of solution in the bottle was warm water. So that totaled to 60 milliliters. So bottle one had 30 milliliters of vinegar. The remainder was 30 milliliters of water and so on and so forth for the rest of the bottles. Now I wanted to show the beginning process of the experiment. This is the yeast, sugar, and the vinegar located in each of my labeled sample bottles. This is all of the sample bottles with their balloons secured on top with their warm water to activate the fermentation process and a timer that was set for the duration of the two hour trial that I was running for this experiment. I decided to run my experiment for a two hour trial and I'm going to include more pictures of the fermentation process and whether or not the balloons inflated, and I'll give you timestamps of when that did or did not happen. Here we have a photo captured five minutes and three seconds after the balloons were first secured. Just pay close attention to these levels here. And moving down, we can see that our positive control inflated at nine minutes and nine seconds, and you can see the difference here in those levels. Moving forward at 26 minutes and 19 seconds, we still do not have the inflation in any of these samples, but the positive control has grown quite considerably. This was captured at 30 minutes flat. The positive control was still the only balloon to be inflated, and as you can see, there's a lot of growth happening in this bottle. Moving on at one hour, 16 minutes and 42 seconds, bottle, f bottle four actually had a little bit of activity here. It's not quite that noticeable in this picture, forgive me, but I could see it with my eyes. And then moving down to one hour, 32 minutes and 15 seconds, we actually had the negative control begin to inflate, which was surprising. And still a little bit of activity here on this number four here. And as you can see, positive control has just completely grown into the balloon itself. And lastly, we have 
at one hour, 35 minutes and 12 seconds, bottle floor began to inflate right here. And at the final two hours of fermentation, we have our negative and positive controls inflated and just our number four bottle with five milliliters of vinegar inflated. So overall, after completion of my experiment, I found that pH does play a very important role in the fermentation process of yeast. The positive control, which harbored the ideal environment, thrived. The, the yeast grew great. It, it did a fantastic job. It did what it was supposed to do. Uh, what surprised me was that the negative control that did not have sugar was able to inflate the balloon over the sample bottles with vinegar one two and three so the th the one that had 30 milliliters 25 milliliters and 15 milliliters did not was unable to inflate the balloon while the negative control that didn't have sugar was able to inflate the balloon so it's clear that acidity can really put a damper on the fermentation process and stop it from happening so that completes my laboratory research project i hope you enjoyed thank you